Thank you for joining The Point Online, as we're obviously not able to meet together because of the snow. My name is Nate, and I'm one of the pastors here. And while we're not able to gather together this morning, we are very excited to be able to kick off a brand new series entitled Reach. And we'll be hearing from Pastor Gabe in just a few moments as we begin this exciting outreach-based message. But before we do so, I just want to take a moment and remind you and encourage you to utilize our online giving solution found on our webpage at pointva.com. You can do so by simply selecting the menu bar at the top right hand corner of the page and then select the give online button following that. It's fast, convenient, and very secure. And as always, we want to thank you so much for your investments in our ministry. It's allowing us to do what we do and impact many. Next week, we'll be sharing with you uh, the exciting 2015 Impact Report, and can't wait to do that. Once again, we appreciate you joining us online, and if you have yet to join us in person, we would encourage you to do that, uh, perhaps next week as well. We'd love the opportunity to be able to meet you in person. Right now, let's join Pastor Gabe as he shares with us from God's Word. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks so much for taking some time this morning to join us online. And obviously, uh, we're, we're together online today because we have however many inches of snow uh, outside. So um, thanks again for taking the morning. For those that are with us for the first time, my name is Gabe. I'm the senior pastor of The Point and just want to give a very warm welcome uh, to you. And I hope that uh, you'll join us in person uh, sometime very, very soon, hopefully even maybe this coming weekend. Uh, today is very unique in that we're kicking off a brand new series, and we've never kicked off a series uh, through an online service only on a snow day, and typically you wouldn't do that. Uh, but as you're going to learn throughout the course of this series and this morning, we have an action-packed uh, several months, a couple of months actually, just leading up into Easter. And so I'm so excited about kicking this series off this morning. And the name of the series is Reach. And I think it's really fitting that um, actually we're kicking this off and we're not worshiping together in a physical building because what this series is all about is the reach that God is calling us as a church to make in our communities, in cities, and in countries uh, throughout the world. And so I'm so excited because ultimately we as a church, as the church, um, we're not defined by a building. And so this is an exciting series to kick off and even kick off online. And for those of, us, those of you that have been with us for, let's say, at least a year, you remember uh, last year around this time, we had a series called Build a Greater Story, where I was casting vision uh, for what God was calling us to accomplish in the next two years. And a huge part of Build a Greater Story included things like um, just, just more strategic corporate outreach and impact in our, in our community, in our city, um, and, and even throughout the world. And so what REACH is, is ultimately a fulfillment of what God has called us to do and build a greater story. So we have been spending months as a team plan, praying and planning, asking God what it, what it was that he was calling us to do and what it would look like as build a greater story came to uh, fruition. So this is an incredibly exciting season for us and you're going to be seeing reach not just throughout this series but even beyond this series as we make an impact in our communities, cities, and countries throughout the world. Today we're going to start off in the book of Acts chapter 1 and I'm going to spend the most of our time this morning together in Acts 3 but we got to set up where we're headed in Acts 3. So Acts chapter 1 and if you have your Bible in front of you, you can turn to it, you can pull it up online as you're watching. But in Acts chapter 1, in verse number 1, we're going to pick up where Luke begins this, this account. And he says this, The first account I composed Theophilus. And the first account meaning his gospel account, the gospel of Luke. The first account I composed Theophilus about all that Jesus began to do and teach. And so that, that word began to do and teach, began is a very important word. Until, verse 2, until the day when he was taken up to heaven after he had, by the Holy Spirit, given orders. You should underline that word orders. To the apostles whom he had chosen. Now, this word orders in the Greek, it's the word entelo, and it means a command. Or think of it in terms of a specific mission. Okay, so what is that mission, that specific mission that Jesus gave through the Holy Spirit? Verse number six, we're going to drop down to that verse. So when they had come together, they were asking Jesus, saying, Lord, is it at this time that you're restoring the kingdom to Israel? 
So in other words, Lord, is, is this the mission that you're giving, the command, the order, that now's the time to restore the kingdom of Israel? Now's the time that that Davidic kingdom that we've been dreaming about and waiting on and praying for for years is now the time that it's going to come to fruition and now the time it's going to come about. And so I want you to notice that this is a question around the timing of God as well. God's activity, but also a question about God's uh, timing. And I think it's interesting because when it comes to the ways of God, the will of God, those are the things our questions center on, aren't they? Uh, God's timing and his activity. God, what are you doing and when is this going to happen? God, I sense something is stirring in my heart. When is this going to actually come about? And so that's the implication for us. It's the very same kind of idea. And I want you to pick up with me now at verse number seven. Here's the response of Jesus. He doesn't, he doesn't rebuke them for their question, but he does redirect their question. It says this in verse seven. He said to them, it's not for you to know the times or the, the epochs. And, and times here in, in the Greek is the word chronos. And so think of this as, as like a duration of time. It's not for you to know the, the times, the, the duration of time. Or this next word that he uses for time is the Greek word kairos. Maybe some of your version of the Bible maybe uses the word seasons. But the kairos refers to opportunities. So he said it's not for you to know the duration of time or the specific opportunities necessarily, which the Father has fixed by his own authority. In other words, Jesus is saying, is, I'm not, God the Father is not going to give it to us ahead of time. He says, but, verse 8, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria, and even to the remotest part of the earth. So here's the order, here's the command, here's the commission that Jesus gives through the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and this is known as the Great Commission. And this is the fifth time that we have the Great Commission recorded in the New Testament. It's written in, the, um, in all of the Gospel accounts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then here's the fifth recording of the Great Commission that we have. But, but here's what I want you to get at and understand is that Jesus is saying that this order, this command I'm giving you, you're going to live out this new mission, and it's going to be full of God moments. It's not going to be this predictable, scripted, um, you know, just this thing that makes sense necessarily to you all the time. Understand that it's going to be this journey and this mission that I'm inviting you on, and you're going to live it out in the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's going to be full, day after day after day, full of these God-ordained moments and opportunities. You know, a lot of us, when it comes to our Christianity, we want the checklist, don't we? Okay, I've checked this off, i checked that off, check this off. So I'm doing all the Christian things. But that's not what this journey God's called us to be on. It really is. The journey that God has called us to be on, this command that he's given us, it's one that it's alive and it's breathing. It's this mission that has life. And it's going to only be lived out in the power of the Holy Spirit. By listening to the Holy Spirit and doing what the Holy Spirit uh, says, it's going to be full of these God moments. Um, I have an email that I'm going to read to you that came from a care pastor, uh, Donald, who many of you know, Donald Fields. He writes, back in October, a reporter asked NBA player Stephen Curry how he continues to improve his already stellar skills. And after listening to Curry's response, a commentator had a keen insight, adding, Stefan practices to the point that the game slows down. So if you've ever watched like a, 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 a Major League Baseball game in person or even NFL or, you know, a lot of times it looks like these guys are just effortless. It almost looks like they're uh, lackluster in their approach, but it's because they've practiced it over and over and over that everything they do, every every movement on the, on the field or on the court, it just looks so effortless because they've become that good at it. They've mastered their, their trade. So here's, here's what Donald writes. He continues, I begin to think, what would it look like if I begin to uh, step up my practice time with, with the Lord? Would life slow down? Obviously, 24 hours would not become 25. But if I intentionally practice making my relationship with God better, how would life change? Would I begin to recognize God moments that I've been missing with maybe my wife or kids or family or folks at work, at play, at Starbucks? You get the point. Why do we practice anything? We practice to get better, to improve. 
And perfection isn't something to grasp this side of eternity. So practice, it, it, practice is something we will do until the day it, it arrives. In the meantime, my prayer is, is that by being intentional about my focus, I will understand and recognize the perfect presence and movement of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in increasing measure that I may better respond uh, to Him. And this is exactly the heart of the Great Commission as Jesus gives it in one in Acts 1.8. It's a relationship, a journey that we're on as we say yes to God moments that He brings across and in front of our lives. So here's a point I want you to write down uh, for this morning. Here's your takeaway as the first part of this series as we launch this out. Yes to a God moment becomes a defining moment. Yes to a God moment becomes a defining moment. And if we would open our eyes and begin to capture each of these moments that God brings our way, and again, it could be in any realm or area of life, but as we begin to say yes to each of these moments, what we find is they become defining and shaping moments in, in our lives. And as Donald said, in terms of practice, we're getting better at it. We're learning more and more to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, having the courage uh, to obey what it is that He's placing on our on our hearts. So with that in mind and that set up, yes to a God moment becomes a defining moment. I want to look at Acts 3. And in Acts 3, in verse number 1, here's what's recorded. Now, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the ninth hour, which was the hour of prayer. Now, there were two major times for worship throughout the day, um, and, and so this is one of them. So every good Jew would come to the temple for the ninth hour, the, the hour of prayer for worship. And verse 2 says, And a man who had been lame from his mother's womb was being carried along, whom they used to set down uh, every day at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful in order to beg an alms of those who were entering the temple. So it's like the perfect money-making scheme here because they would set this lame man at the, 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 the temple day by day. And for, for the Jews, rabbis would teach that there were three major pillars to the Jewish faith. One was the Torah, or the law of God. A second was worship at the temple. And then the third was uh, giving an, an alms, or acts of kindness. And so giving alms was a perfect opportunity to display this act of kindness. And so think about it. If I'm looking for a checklist, right, I can knock off all three of these pillars, like in this one visit to the temple. I can uh, study, hear the Torah, I can worship in the temple, and there's a perfect opportunity here to uh, give an alms or monetary gift, display that act of kindness. And so it's like the perfect monetary scheme, okay, uh, for, for those who are looking to capitalize on, on those who are playing the game. For those Jews that are coming to worship, it's a great opportunity just to check off the list. So in verse 3, it says, when he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he began to ask to, to receive alms. But Peter, along with John, fixed his gaze on him, and he said, look at us. Now, you have to think what's going through this lame man's mind at this point. No one's ever stopped to, like, say, look at me. No one's ever stopped to give him attention other than just flipping a coin here or there. So he's probably thinking, wow, this is a great, a big monetary gift that's about to come my way. Verse 5, and he began to give them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I do not possess silver or gold, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, walk. And seizing him by the right hand, he raised him up, and immediately his feet and his ankle bones were strengthened. And with a leap he stood upright, and he began to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. Yes to a God moment becomes a defining moment. Now, there are just a couple of observations that I want to make after what we've just read, and then we're going to wrap up for the morning. The first is this. Think about this. Jesus had worshiped in the temple himself. He'd gone into the temple himself during his lifetime. And so this man is a man that was laid there on a daily basis. It's very, very likely that Jesus himself had walked by this man over the course of his life, and, and yet he never healed him. I mean, I think it's really interesting. Jesus walked by this man before, and yet he never chose to, to heal him when he walked by him. Now, I want you to also think about this. Peter and John had walked by this man before. Like, this wasn't their first time walking by this man or walking into the temple for the ninth hour and that hour of worship. Yet, they had walked by him before. 
So how do we explain this one particular moment? If Jesus had walked by him and not healed him, if Peter and John had walked by them before and, and, and they had never kind of had it on their heart to heal him, why this moment? Why this one particular time? And the only way to explain it is, is that it was a God moment. It was a moment that God had ordained, that God had appointed. It was a moment, remember what we read in Acts 1, that was fixed by the authority of the Father, that was empowered by the Holy Spirit. And in the name of Jesus, when Peter and John said yes to this God moment, it became a defining moment. For both them and for the lame man, and if you continue the story, for thousands of others, as a result of this, that Peter was able to preach to, and many, many, many more were added to the church that day. And this is the exciting journey that God has called us to be on. We don't have to engineer these moments. We don't have to fabricate them. We just have to simply live in intimacy with God and say yes to the Holy Spirit when these God moments arise. And when we say yes to God moments, God moments become these defining moments in our lives. These are moments that shape us. And then I want you to also notice this, because a lot of us as believers, we struggle with inadequacy. Could God ever use me? Could God really use me to share my faith with my coworkers or with my family? I feel so inadequate. Could God really um, use me to, to reach out to someone that's homeless or poor and, and buy them lunch? Like, I just feel so inadequate. Like, I, I'm not an outgoing people person. Here's what's amazing. In this moment, Peter and John, they did not have what this man wanted. They had no silver or gold. But what they did have, they gave to him. And that was the name of Jesus. The name, and the, when we see the name, the use of the word name here, it, it means the character of Jesus, all of who Jesus is. And so while they didn't have silver and gold, they were fully equipped for this God moment. And you and I are fully equipped for the God moments that God brings in our path as well. God has fully equipped us, and it's simply a matter of us hearing from God, learning to hear his voice, and then having the courage to do what he says. These are what God moments and God-ordained moments are all about. Here's how Paul writes about it in, in Ephesians chapter 2. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. You know, the questions about time and, you know, questions we have about God's activity around time. What we see is, again, these are things that God has fixed by his own authority. And if we will simply hear from God, if we will live in intimacy with him, then what we will find is we will live on this exciting journey day by day where God brings moment after moment after moment in front of us. And if we will say yes to these God moments, these opportunities, what we'll find is they'll become defining moments, both for us and for those that God is placed on our path to, to reach. When we talk about our mission, you heard the point, to love God, love people, love life. That's what the love life part is all about. You know, loving God, loving people, and then loving life is understanding that we're living on this exciting journey with Him, and we're looking on a day-by-day -day basis, moment-by-moment -moment basis even, for these God moments that He has prepared for us to say yes to. So here's what we're going to do as we wrap up uh, this morning. I want you to know about an upcoming date, March 19th, where we as a church are going to just go into our community in a huge, in a huge, huge way. And where through our groups and through our church corporately, we are going to meet the needs of, of people much like um, the lame man. And what we're going to do is we want to take these next several weeks at the point to, um, to, to learn of stories of people that you're aware of that have needs, people that are hurting and broken and that, that need us to maybe come to their home and build a handicap ramp or they don't have the means to paint their rooms at their home. And so we want to we wanna come alongside of them and, and alongside of you and you've been aware of this need and we want to we meet their need in that way or, or any need at all of anyone that you're aware of outside of our church. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to collect um, that information. You're going to make us aware of the needs and, and how we can potentially meet those needs. And we're going to use these as an opportunities to engage those, to reach those in our communities who are hurting and who are broken and who are probably in need of the gospel and the hope of the gospel. And we're praying even for opportunities to share the gospel as we reach out into our community. So at the end of this uh, message, Jen Buxton, our outreach director, is going to come online and she's going to share with you more information about how we want to collect that information. But we need you to make us aware of the needs that you're aware of in your communities so that we can reach into our communities with the hope of the gospel. We can say yes to the God moments that, uh, that God brings our way so they become defining moments for not just us, but for those that we're reaching as well. I also want to tell you that as part of this series, next Sunday, Vernon Brewer from World Help is going to be with us and sharing a very challenging message as part of this series. Um, this is a man who has a vision to reach the world who's actually done it. And I love the statement he lives by. Every day I try to live my life in such a way that I accomplish at least one thing that will outlive me and last for eternity. He basically lives his life saying yes to the God moments. And again, they become def defining moments. Now, Vernon will be here with us preaching. I'm still going to be there. So for all of you who heard, you know, oh, Pastor Gabe's not going to preach, so he must not going to be there. I'll take off next Sunday. No, 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 no. I'm still going to be there, and I want you there as well, and I want you to invite someone uh, to attend as well next Sunday as we enter into week two of this series. And then the third week of this series, Sunday, February 7th, we're going to be sharing about our village project in Guatemala, what God is calling us to do in countries throughout the world. We got a video that Todd Free, our very own, is producing. We're going to be sharing that morning about the village project. And if you have been part of the village project, if you've been to Guatemala, we want you to wear your shirt that morning, okay? Wear your shirt, and we're going to have everybody on stage that morning that's been to Guatemala, all of the teams, and it's going to be so incredible because we want everyone to see the army and the waves of armies that have gone down to uh, Guatemala as part of our village project in Curva del Pina. So that's going to be an awesome morning. So just want to make you aware of what's coming. And then on Sunday, February the 14th, I'm going to be kicking off a brand new series um, on the seven I am statements of Jesus. And that is going to be a powerful series as we study through the Gospel of John, those seven I am statements. And that's going to lead us up into Easter Sunday. On Easter Sunday, that series is going to culminate with, um, with I am the resurrection and the life. I cannot wait for that, but don't worry. If, if you say, you, well, Easter Sunday, we're going to have a lot of first-time guests. But, but listen, anybody who's a first-time guest that Sunday, they're not going to feel like they're missing out or they've missed out on the whole series. It's going to be a very, very strong um, Sunday and standalone teaching on I am the resurrection and, and the life. So I want to give you an idea of what's coming up. But March 19th is a big, big day. And again, Jen is going to come in just a moment and share um, more information uh, about that as, as we close out in just a second. So we want you to challenge you. Look for God moments this week. Maybe God has put on your heart, that nudge on your heart to shovel uh, the sidewalk of your neighbor, shovel their driveway. Um, maybe uh, God has put on your heart to reach out to a friend and just tell them you're praying for them. Maybe God is putting in your heart this week to buy coffee uh, for the person in line at Starbucks and just say you want to demonstrate the love of Christ in a very practical way. You just want to be generous and buy their coffee this morning. Maybe this week God's going to put that nudge on your heart to give the incredibly generous tip uh, to your waiter or your waitress. Listen, we want to live in tune with God, in intimacy with God, and live out of the overflow of that. And we want to say yes to the God moments. When we say yes to God moments, they become defining moments in our life. Let's learn to say yes, and let's not miss a one of what God has prepared uh, for us. The final thing I want to say as we close is if you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that perhaps this moment right now is a God moment. And this is the very first yes that you're going to give to God in saying, yes, Lord, I want to surrender my heart to you. I want to surrender my life to you. I want to receive the forgiveness of sin through Jesus Christ. I want to walk in this brand new life that God has, has for me. And so I believe that this morning, this video is a God moment for you. And it's an opportunity for you to say yes for the very first time. And if you're that person, which I'm sure many, many of you are, 
we uh, want to take this time now to lead you in a prayer as an expression of that. So if you're ready to receive Christ, place your faith in Him. I just want to ask you to, to bow with me right now and pray and repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your Son, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for sending Him to die on the cross for my sin. Come into my heart, cleanse me of my sin, and give me the strength to live for you from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer with me this morning, uh, we want to know about that. And at this time, uh, Jen Buxton is going to join us, and she's going to give you next steps of what we need to know uh, to communicate uh, that decision with us. Thanks again for spending the morning with us, and uh, we look forward to seeing you back at Monticello High School very soon. Hey everybody, my name is Jen Buxton and I'm the Outreach Director here at The Point. If you prayed to receive Christ this morning, we'd love to hear about your decision. Please email Pastor Gabe at gabeatthepointva.com. We would love to hear about your decision and follow up with you next week. We'd love to give you Seek First, which is a free resource and it'll help you with your journey as you begin to follow Christ. Also, don't forget to send in your nominations for the March 19th REACH event. You can fill out a form online at thepointva.com forward slash reach out. Thank you so much for joining us online this morning. We look forward to seeing you next Sunday back at Monticello High School at 9.30 or 11 a.m.